Hey, 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 Texas Study students, this is Coach Signs, welcoming you back to another one of our video lessons. Today's video lesson is on Chapter 13.1 and 2, Life in the State of Texas. Now the first thing that we're going to talk about today is rural life in Texas. Now what rural means is that you live out in the country. Okay? As opposed to being urban. Sorry, urban, there we go, it's an N. And that's in the city. Now, rural right there, as you can see, right here, rural means in the country, and urban means in the city. Now, Texas farms grew from 12,000 in 1846 to 43,000 in 1860. Now, corn, as you can see here in this picture, was, one, some, was the largest food crop and was a major part of the Texans' diet. Now, a food crop is a, like this is a crop right there. A food crop is where you can make profits out of selling things that you have grown, right? However, very few farmers were able to make a profit from these food crops that you can see here trying to sell these crops to people around the state. So, what a lot of farmers did is they turned to cotton. Now, cotton was the main cash crop in Texas. A cash crop, as you can see here, is a crop produced for a profit or to make money. So, just to recap real quick, a food crop was a crop used to provide food for the farmers, and a cash crop was a crop produced to provide profit or money for farmers. Now, with the cotton being a profitable cash crop, cotton could be shipped from nor to northern states and Europe where it was made into cloth. And you can see here that how it would go from what it is right here on the field to the left into the clothes that you are wearing right now on your back and the shirts and into towels and bed sheets and things of that nature. Now you're probably asking yourself, Coach, well, well who picked this cotton that you can see on the field? It was the African-American slaves, that's right. They were the ones that picked the cotton, and uh, the white man was the one who, or their slave masters, were the ones who profited from this. Now, by the year 1850, fewer than 13,000 people lived in Texas towns. But, by 1860, that number jumped to over 26,000 nearly doubling in 10 years. Now in the year 1850, Galveston was the largest town in Texas with 5,000 residents. But only 10 years later, a simple 10 years, in 1860, San Antonio became the largest town in Texas with over 8,000 residents. Now in the last slide we talked about people actually living in towns. And if you remember, a lot of people lived in rural areas of Texas. Okay, So in the year 1850, 212,000 people lived in Texas. All right, Lived in the whole state. By the year 1860, 10 years later, the population grew to 604,000. Basically tripling the amount of people in just 10 years. A huge spike in the population of Texas. Now, most of the Texans were coming from the southern states like Arkansas, Louisiana, Tennessee, and Alabama, and the basically, guys, the red states here, and as you can see in these maps, were coming to Texas for all the opportunities that Texas had to offer with all of its land. Basically, all of these people were migrating from the U.S., from the other parts of the U.S. to get to Texas and trying to fulfill their idea and their belief of manifest destiny. Now the next we're going to talk about is the Tejanos. Now by 1850 there were 23,000 Tejanos living in Texas. Here's a statue of a Tejano. Remember a Tejano was a Mexican, uh, Mexican uh, born person 
with uh, who comes together with someone who is from Texas, right? Now, here is another picture of a statue from the Tejanos. Now, this statue, guys, right here is in Austin. All right, this uh, statue right here was placed to represent all the Tejanos that have come through the state of Texas and are in Austin. Now, with that, most Tejanos, most lived in San Antonio in the Nessus Strip or around El Paso. Now, on this map that you can see here, here's El Paso, here's San Antonio, all right, and the Nueces Strip comes right up through there. Now, that is where some of the, uh, excuse me, some of the Tejanos live. Now, as you can see, here's the Rio Grande Valley there. Not a lot has changed to where a lot of Tejanos and people who are, uh, have deep roots in Texas have changed, have lived in El Paso, San Antonio, and everything south of the, Nes of the Nueces River, which includes the Rio Grande Valley right there. Now, around the time of all this population spike and growth, we had a man named Juan Cortina, who argued that the Anglos took land from the Tejanos and treated them unfairly. Here we have a picture of Mr. Juan Cortina pictured here in our slide. Now, what Cortina did was that he didn't feel that the Anglos were treating the Mexicans and the Tejanos and everybody leaving, living in Texas at that time uh, correctly, right? So him and he had gathered 400 men and they carried out acts of violence against corrupt officials and corrupt Anglo-Americans that were taking these lands. Now, these actions that were taken and pretty much that were against the Anglos were known as the Cortina War. Now, it's not like this helped out any. All this did was increase the tensions between the Anglos and the Tejanos and Mexicans living in Texas. And this made the Anglos more suspicious of these Tejanos and Mexicans living among them. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is European immigration. Now, by the year 1860, over 43,000 people born outside the United States lived in the state of Texas. Now, the state of Texas was mainly made up of Germans. Germans made up the largest number of Texas settlers. You can see right here in the red, that's the country of Germany, right? But the, of the Texas settlers, the second most were the Irish, which is that country right there, right here, where my arrow is, followed by the English right here to the right. Now, as we had talked about in the previous slide, the second biggest migration came uh, European immigration, excuse me, came from the Irish. Now, in the year 1845, many Irish fled Ireland because a disease attacked their main crop, which was the potato, causing a famine. Now, a famine is a severe food shortage, or when a disease hits your, your food crop and it is no good, bugs, or fungus, or something is just eating up your crop, and it's not able to grow successfully. And that's why you have a severe food shortage. Now, now this famine that was in Ireland because of potato was also known as the potato blight. Blight. Now, this potato blight caused a lot of people to die, a lot of people to uh, start, have starvation or become very hungry. This is why it caused such a migrate immigration to the United States and especially to Texas. By the year 1860, the number of Irish settlers grew to 3,480 in the state of Texas. Now, remember, there are still native Texans in Texas, right? So, in the year 1854, Texas government passed a bill to set aside land for native Texan reservations. Though, there were still some, very few lived here, right? The few reservations that were set up lasted only a few years. Most native Texans were forced to move out of Texas. If you remember, in the presidency, uh, last chapter, a few chapters ago, of, the, of Mayor View Lamar, he, remember, he forced out all the Cherokees into Oklahoma, right? So this is why 
uh, most native Texans were forced to move out of Texas, and that's why there are very few here in the reservation. Now, this what this bill does, setting up this reservation, this brings a lot of tension, tensions between the Anglo Texans, uh, excuse me, the Anglo Americans, because they're they're now part of the United States, and the Native Americans here in Texas, the Native Texans. This is bringing a lot of tensions, which will lead to a lot of wars, and a big war, as we'll discuss in the next few chapters. Now, this concludes our video lesson on chapter 12, uh, excuse me, 13.1 and 13.2, Life in the State of Texas. This is Coach Signs, signing out.